the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the night pray with fasting and you will evolve into a sign and a wonder that is God's pattern can I tell you this this is what you must do if you want to see the glory of God manifest in your life we are going to pray our first prayer point is found in Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 you want to see the glory of the Lord in your finances you want to see the glory of the Lord in ministry give yourself continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word are there people of prayer in this place can we take the next five minutes to pray wherever you are I want you to commit engage with understanding pray in the spirit pray in your understanding where are the watchmen now is your time to pray lift your voice and pray I obtain grace now that you know these things happy are you if you do them Lord the grace to submit myself continually to the ministry of prayer the grace to submit myself to the ministry of the word but we will give ourselves continually Gombe, give yourselves continually when it is time for bible study and the learning of doctrine do not ignore it sit down and camp with the word go and buy books go and listen to materials don't say i'm a prayer warrior i'm seeing visions settle down and learn doctrine learn the ways of god learn about financial prosperity learn about discipline and moral excellence learn about character learn about leadership learn about administration don't ignore any dimension embrace the whole counsel of god and then garnish it with a life of prayer let me show you one of the major ministries of prayer is the ministry of prophetic intercession listen carefully the ability to stand in partnership with heaven and shift climates over territories isaiah 62 help those under the anointing isaiah 62 please give it to us we're wrapping up hear me gombe if you sit down and just say government will change this land business people will change this land you will sit down and nothing will change there is the ministry of prophetic intercession through prayer over families over the government over territories let me show you a scripture we're wrapping up for zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth verse 2 the Gentiles shall see your righteousness Gombe and all kings thy glory Gombe thou shalt be called by a new name and the mouth of the Lord which the mouth of the Lord shall name verse 3 Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. These are all the things that God wants to do. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephziba and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married now how will this come to pass next verse it says for as a young man married a virgin so shall thy sons marry thee and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall thy god rejoice over thee verse 6 this is why it will come to pass i have set watchmen upon your walls all gombe which shall never hold their peace Day or night, 
he that make mention of the Lord he said keep not silent verse 7 and give him no rest until prophecy becomes manifestation that means engage in prayer every family must become an altar of prayer the campus must become an altar of prayer in addition to a learning institution every church must be an altar of prayer your government houses must be altars of prayer give him no rest bring before him the prophetic word lord you have said this concerning gombe that you are the jewel in the savannah we decree and declare it must be so give him no rest listen please look up i can tell you that prayer if and when done with understanding can change the narrative over a life and over a family there was a man in the bible called jabez are we bible students the bible says the mother named him jabez because she bore him in sorrow this guy saw a pattern of negative things following his life but he got to a point where he prayed he said oh that thou wouldest bless me is someone ready to pray you are going to declare lord your prophetic word over my life in this season i enforce this manifestation by prayer open your mouth and pray hallelujah you are praying because you believe in jesus can i tell you it is the season where women of prayer prophetic intercessors you need to rise in this land the time of sleeping and giving flimsy excuses is over it's time he said awake thou that sleepest man of god it's time to stop giving excuses it's time to know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and pray prophecy to manifestation teach the young people how to pray pastors teach your members how to pray businessmen pray politicians pray students pray lecturers pray academicians pray members of the force pray he spoke a parable to the end that men ought always to pray in the name of jesus the last prayer point and then i speak over your life and we're done for tonight please listen the last prayer point proverbs chapter 8 is our next and last prayer point proverbs chapter 8 from verse 1 media help us please proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice she standeth in the top of the high places by the way of the places of the paths wisdom now she cried at the gates at the entry of the city who is crying wisdom at the coming in at the doors unto you O men i call and my voice is to the sons of man O oh, ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart verse 6 here for i will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things verse 7 for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips verse 8 all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and nothing is forward or perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge verse 10 receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than fine gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it god is taking us somewhere i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions 
the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate 14 counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding and i have strength 15 now wisdom is speaking by me kings reign and princes decree justice by me princes rule and nobles even the judges of all the earth 17 i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me are you ready to pray father the mystery that connects what i do not know but i need in my life grant me access to it even by your wisdom go ahead and pray the things i need in my life that i do not know how to obtain may wisdom come for me the wisdom to be empowered financially the wisdom to live and walk in health the wisdom to have a robust ministry the wisdom to lead as a politician the wisdom to establish the counsel of god in my territory i obtain by faith The wisdom to be a responsible father the wisdom to be a responsible husband the wisdom to be a responsible wife and mother the wisdom to be an exceptional man of God the wisdom to be an exceptional leader by me kings reign and princes rule In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 2nd Corinthians 1 24 I'm speaking over your life now is it 1 24 help me First Corinthians one twenty four. But unto them which are called, we are called in Christ, all of us, with no exception. Please look at me. No matter what background you are coming from, some of you may be coming from families where there's no electricity some of you may be coming from a background where nobody has risen can i tell you you are still called some of you may have failed failed as men of god failed as sincere people some of you you are standing looking at me right now and you're at your wit's end you are saying i'm tired this thing is not working i'm not getting something right you are correct something must be missing christ when the anointing is revealed it comes to you as the power of God and it comes to you as the wisdom of God you want to access the anointing as the power of God the ministry of prayer is responsible for drawing that dimension of the anointing dunamis you want to access the wisdom of God the power that comes from the wisdom of God will come or the power that translates to the wisdom of God comes from his word Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4 that is where you get the power that comes from his word the power that gives you authority God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praises verse 4 amplified puts it very beautifully verse 4 it says and his brightness was like the sunlight 
rays streamed from his hands and there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power there is a dimension of God's power that hides in his light when you access his light you access the power that translates as the wisdom of God Christ revealed as the power of God Christ revealed as the wisdom of God but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word can I pray for you my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn I am anointed with fresh oil now as I pray please do well to help those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out just receive in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing that fans back a man's prayer altar the grace for supplication and prayer I stretch my hands it will come on everybody but there are a few people that this mantle and this grace this grace of a watchman right now may that anointing fall on you take that grace now receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ men and women of prayer I prophesy to you arise by the spirit there are many women from tonight that mantle is coming upon you the mantle that was upon Anna the prophetess that grants you capacity to pray this is where many believers fail we do not act the Bible clearly says there is he that scattered and tender to poverty there is he that withholded more than his meat I mean there is he that scattered and yet increases there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty and yet you will find people who are greedy wanting God to bless them you will find people who have no passion for the house of God wanting God to bless them you will find people who ignore and neglect diligence wanting God to bless them what are the areas that you are trusting God for a miracle what are the areas in your life, precious people of God, that you're trusting God to activate supernatural possibilities? I may be talking to a man of God, a woman of God, who is trusting God. You are saying, Apostle, you may not know what is happening to me in ministry. I am down. Ministry is not working. I love God with all my heart. I serve Him. But I don't seem to see the outstretched arm of God. It may be a mother who is watching. It may be a father who is saying, Will God visit my family? Can He visit my children? I'm tired of negative things happening around my life. Until you are willing to take responsibility, the light will never shine blaming people for your condition blaming the government for your condition now I know that here and there there may be legitimate grounds upon which you may say okay my father my brother my uncle somebody who would have helped me but listen to me I say this especially to Africans Nigerians I say this to believers until you are willing to take responsibility over your results you will never that sense of entitlement that makes it look like someone somewhere should succeed and come and bless you it will only lead to frustration as a man of God you must take responsibility and say look if my ministry is not working it is not because there are too many churches in my city if my ministry is not working it is not because um, maybe there is some kind of tribal sentiments no take responsibility there may be a dimension of grace and fire and knowledge that I do not know and you contend for it in the spirit of faith very very important so you must find out the end of meditation is understanding and understanding is only complete when you find out your role your participatory role in causing the work that God has finished in Christ to be made manifest in your life 
please try to understand this Abraham did not just sit down God beckoned on him follow me and the Bible says Abraham got up and began to walk he got to a point where God beckoned on him Abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest even at the risk of being controversial even at the risk of being looked upon do you know what it means to sacrifice your child I don't know the extent of wickedness that that would be that a man would carry his young son of about 12 years old take him to a mountain and go and butcher him simply you would see that as selfishness and yet he was able to take that risk to prove to God that he trusted him and God swore and said in blessing I will bless you you read that in Hebrews chapter, uh, uh, Romans chapter 4 when he began to talk about the, the, the faith of Abraham that Abraham conceived I think we should go there as I prepare to round up Romans chapter 4 please mm. Hallelujah Romans chapter 4 we we'll read verse 1 and 2 then for time's sake I will rush to verse um, I will rush to verse verse 12 and 13 and then we will just look at a few things and see the character of faith it says what shall we say then that Abraham as our father as pertaining to the flesh had found that means he's showing us now how Abraham obtained the promise verse 3 for what saith okay verse 3 let's go to verse 3 for what saith the scripture listen carefully Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness for time's sake I want us to go to verse 16 verse 16 very quickly the Bible says therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all 17 as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations the maker is speaking again I have made thee the father of many nations before whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were look at the character of faith now verse 18 the Bible says who against hope so do not think Abraham just believed God because it was convenient there were things around him that negated the speakings of God but the Bible says who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according not to his desire according to that which was spoken what was spoken so shall thy seed be 19 it says and be not weak in faith he considered not so the character of faith is that once you find what God has said and you find your role do not consider what the limitations are it says he was about a hundred years old neither yet considered the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not the Bible says at the promise of God through unbelief remember I spoke about the integrity of God staggering not at the promise of God through unbelief it says but was strong in faith giving glory to God hallelujah and being fully persuaded fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able are you seeing now just leave it there so we see that he was persuaded at God's integrity and now he's persuaded in God's ability integrity ability God do you love me enough to do it yes God do you have power enough to do it yes on this basis I believe you show me what role I have to play and God says this is now your role Joshua Selman this is now your role New Heritage Baptist Church A B C D and when you find it you obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with that which he has given you and the Bible says inevitably if that becomes true for you then your result is guaranteed blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her there shall be a performance not unto them unto her who believe unto new heritage baptist church who believe there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken of the mouth of god when he came to mary the bible says he met mary 
brought glad tidings, sent an angel, Gabriel came and met Mary and began to bring a very controversial salutation. Called her a woman who was highly favored. And Mary looked and wondered what manner of salutation was this. And she began to tell Mary that she would have seed that would not come from a mortal man. And Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? Then he says, the power of the highest shall come overshadow you. At the end of it, Mary said, be it unto me. This is where we are going to be praying. I just established our first prayer point. Be it unto me. According to thy word. Be it unto my finances. According to thy word. Be it unto ministry. According to thy word. Be it unto family. Not according to the economy. Not according to the times. The economy has its own template. The times have their own template. But be it unto me. According to thy word. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are. And begin to pray. And talk to the Lord sincerely. New Heritage Baptist Church we are praying. Be it unto me. Pray the prayer of Mary. And Abraham believed God. He was persuaded about God's integrity. He was persuaded about God's ability. Listen, two of them are important. You can be persuaded in God's integrity. He does not lie. He does not fail. But that's not enough to give you results. You may be persuaded about God's ability alone. You need both a revelation of the surety of his integrity and his ability. We are praying. Grant me grace to know that you are a God of integrity. Grant me grace to know that you are a God who does not fail. In a world today that is full of disappointments, in a world today that is full of disappointed expectations, Grant me grace to know that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. That if your mouth utters it, and if you appear to me through your word, giving me promises, showing me principles, revealing prophecies to me, then I can trust you. I can take you for your word. We are praying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God of heaven. We believe you for New Heritage Baptist Church. We believe you for this mighty assembly. We thank you for the things that you have spoken this year through the mouth of your servant. We thank you for the great things that you have in store for your Zion. For their spiritual growth. For their transformation. For their families. For their finances. For their relevance. For their lives. For their health. We thank you. Bring us all, O oh God, to a point of persuasion. Unbendedness. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Father, open my eyes to see the promise, the principle, and the prophecy allocated for birthing my possibility. Now, two people can have the same need, but the scripture that God will use to bail them out will be different. Two women can be trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Two women can be trusting God to lift their families. For one, God will give a scripture. You need a specific prophetic word. A specific scripture that reveals to you what God wants to do. Say, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. We are praying, Lord, open my eyes. Reveal to me by the agency of the Spirit. Show me, appear to me via your word. Let me see the promise allocated for the area of concern in my life. If my marriage is not working, Lord, show me the scripture. If my health is not working, show me your word. If my destiny is stagnated, show me your word. He sends forth his word, the Bible says, and his word healed them and delivered them. You are praying from the depth of your heart. You are taking personal responsibility for your life. Take personal responsibility for your home, your family, your finances, your ministry. Take personal responsibility for your spiritual growth. 
Don't blame your pastor and say, uh, for instance, oh, um, um, I, I, my pastor did not come to counsel me or give me time. That's why I'm not growing spiritually. That's not true. Don't blame your parents and say, just because my parents uh, did not manifest the level of responsibility I would have wanted. That's why. No, take responsibility. Lord, open my eyes to see it. Don't say it's because God has refused to anoint me. That's why I've not risen as a great man of God. These are very, very well-meaning excuses, but not they are, they are not legitimate excuses. Pray, Lord, grant me grace. I take responsibility over my destiny. And in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, the Son of the living God, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, that I find through searching, I find through prayer, I find through the labor dimension of the word of God. I pray and ask the Lord to open my eyes. Let me find the principles allocated for my lifting. Let me find the principles allocated for my favor, the scriptures. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now that you know these things, he says, happy are you if you do that. Listen to me. It is not just hearing the word that produces results. It is not just knowing what God has said. You must obtain grace to do. The grace does not exempt you from doing. The grace empowers you to do. This is, I think, a, a bit of a balance that must be brought. Because most people think that all that the grace of God does is to exempt you from doing. There are actions that are actions of the law that have been dealt with. But there are actions of faith. James said, show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. There are works that are actions, attestations, participatory actions that validate that you believe God. Very, very important. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, it says, But thou shalt meditate during day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. It says, Thou mayest observe to do, not just observe to know, not just observe to speak. Confession is a very active part of faith, but that's not all. You must obtain grace to do. There are many of us we may need to write the things that we will need to do as our participatory actions of obedience to prove to God that we believe Him fully and then commit His integrity. God is a God of integrity, but His integrity is committed on our behalf at the point of obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm rounding up. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 And it shall come to pass If, that's a condition Thou shalt diligently hearken To the voice of the Lord thy God Then to observe and next to do all Not to do some Not to do the one you like Not to do the one convenient Let me tell you this When you are obeying God You don't choose your conditions You don't choose your terms If God gives you an uh, it, it challenges you for instance and says take a seed to your pastor and sow it into his life so that he will speak over your life to break this hold of delay for instance you must be careful to do all if God says be diligent a lazy man will beg in harvest you cannot just be praying and refuse to be productive and expect that God is going to bring things in your hand no, you will have to trust God for grace to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. He says, as a result, the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And then verse 2 says, these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If, that's the condition, thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. We are going to pray. Lord, show me my role in birthing the possibility that you intend for me to have in this season. Show me my role. We are praying. Please pray. Show me my role. For some of you, your role will need to be to go for training. For some of you, your, your role will need to be investing knowledge. For some of you, your role will need to be to go and buy books that discuss your subject of concern. For some of you, your role will need to be humility. 
For some of you, your role will need to be to build character. For some of you, your role will need to be to spend more time with God's word. For some of you, your role will need to be to stay with scripture and build until you conform to the image of God. For some of you, your role will need to be to take risks. For some of you, your role will need to be to build relationships. For some of you, your role will need to be to spend more time in prayer. For some of you, your role will need to be wisdom, to access wisdom. For some of you, your role, <coughs> excuse me, may need to be to go online and search for job opportunities. For some of you, your role will need to be to sit down with your wife and talk and build a great marriage. For some of you, your role will need to be to be more attentive to your children. For some of you, your role may need to be to love the body of Christ. For some of you, your role may need to be to love God with all your heart. Pray from the depth of your heart. What is my role, O oh God? There has to be something that I need to do. The rich man came to Jesus and said, Good master, what do I do to inherit eternal life? Now the next point we are going to pray. Nobody can fulfill the demands of faith in the strength of the flesh. This is something we need to understand. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. It says... There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Powerful scripture. Who walk not. Not just who sit down there. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Verse 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 3. It says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. You see that now? The flesh made the law weak. It says, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4. And then the Bible says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Verse 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. Here's the point. For to be carnally minded. The word carnal there means sensual. That means the limitation of your impulses is what you think, what you hear, what you see, what you taste. To be carnally minded will only lead you to death. He says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Let me just pause here a bit. And as we round up, let me just encourage us. Believers, we are in very sensitive times that require high level spirituality. There are people who sit down and, you know, we hear all kinds of things from the media. We hear all kinds of things from our relatives and our friends. And you just put on the television and it's like everything is about war. Everything is about trouble. It's like the whole world is packing up. Let me tell you this straight. It is not the destruction of Satan that will bring Jesus back. It is the glory and the dominion of the saints. He is coming as the king of wickedness. God is not sitting on the throne, scratching his head and wondering what to do. No. And the church is not becoming a powerless entity that is under the limitation and, and the vicissitudes of life. The church is the bride of Christ, guarded by his own jealousy. We are a victorious people. But we must be careful what we, we, we allow into the ear gate, into the eye gate. These are sensitive gates to our spirits. The things you read, the things you hear, the company you keep, it is very important. Culture your atmosphere. Remain at a level of spirituality that allows the Holy Spirit to be comfortable working with you. There are pastors who believe that until certain things happen, we cannot prosper. There are businessmen who believe until certain things happen, we cannot prosper. That's not true. God is still a maker. He's making men, making families, making destinies, restoring hope. There are people who have been so blessed even during this pandemic. There are people who have known God. There are people who have increased. I'd like you to exempt yourself through knowledge. You must make up your mind in as much as we love the whole body of Christ and we love the world, we sympathize with the tragic things that have happened to people, but do not allow what is happening in the world to suddenly destroy your conviction. I know whom I have believed. I may not know who you believe and what you believe, but I know what I have believed. 
So we are going to pray. Lord, help me to be spiritual. To be spiritual. That my mind is governed by your word. Not the speakings left, right, bombarded here and there. Not let me not give Satan room to dampen my faith. Let me not give Satan room to destroy my convictions. I will pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'd like you to pray for New Heritage Baptist Church. Pray for Pastor, great servant of God. Pray for his dear wife. Pray for his family. We are at times where ministry is very challenging. The devil is raising all kinds of onslaughts to make sure that the church becomes voiceless. And, and we have to pray. Pray for him. Pray for his wife. Pray for his family. Pray for the deaconry of the New Heritage Baptist Church. Pray for the youth. Pray for every arm of the church. We decree and declare that New Heritage Baptist Church will only continue to go from glory to glory. Pray for the wonderful mothers. Pray for those trusting God for healing. Pray for those trusting God for lifting. Pray for those trusting God for supernatural turnarounds. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. You have shared with us that it is possible to activate divine possibilities. And you have taught us again that results are not the reason why you desire us to seek you. You desire that much more than the things that you will do for us. That we will seek to know you because we truly love you. And Lord, we trust you and we, we say it again that we love you not because of tea and bread. We love you not because of the things that you give us. We love you for who you are. But Lord, we thank you that you are benevolent enough to not leave us without help. You are our helper and you are our maker. And thank you for showing us the systemic nature of your kingdom. That we can activate keys that upon engaging them will open us to a world of limitless possibilities you have taught us faith lord i pray that you bring us to a point of persuasion where we are convinced about your integrity where we are convinced about your ability open us oh god to the understanding illumination that will help us know the participatory roles that we have to play in actualizing prophecy and promises over our lives and Lord, we obtain grace. Grace that will help us to be diligent and to be persistent until your word speaks over our lives. Father, I stretch my hands and I pray for New Heritage Baptist Church and as many who are following and will be following. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless everyone. I pray by the ministry of the Spirit. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I pray that the power of God will touch people that in homes, in families, you experience the grace of God. I pray for breakthrough. I pray for restoration. Those who have gone down and gone cold spiritually, I pray in the name of Jesus, let there be an activation of a fresh love and fire for the things of God. Whatever is a distraction to your life and your spiritual experience, I declare that God will cut it away from you. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will love the Lord with all your heart. I pray that you will hunger after the things of God. And I pray for the leadership. I pray for all families represented. I pray for the youth. Everything you desire God to do in your life, I release my faith with you. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that you are having this experience as your heritage. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me challenge you. Um, please and please I want you to get relevant teachings That talk about the specific areas of concern Let that be your responsibility Find out by the spirit The relevant areas That talk about the issues of concern Sit with the word of God Meditate upon it until you come to a point of persuasion And you come to a point where your faith is alive Then when you find your role Obtain grace from God and do it. Do it with all your heart. Do it with patience and persistence. And I assure you that in the name of Jesus, you will find out that you will step into a whole world, a new world of supernatural possibilities. That the currency they have used to purchase these possibilities is the speakings of God. The Bible calls it the Logos, the Word of God. John 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos of God. It says, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, all things, all things, New Heritage Baptist Church, 
all things finance all things children all things restoration all things the breakthrough that you need all things the career that you need it says all things were made manufactured so understand where all things come from the possibilities that we are trying to talk about in this conference are possibilities that already exist in the world they are only manifested in our lives they are not manifested in heaven these are realities that already exist our finances our jobs so what we call a miracle in the earth realm is simply a system of transfer from the realm of the spirit that that reality is already in existence very powerful so for the woman who is trusting god for the fruit of the womb the child is not going to jump and just manifest it's already a reality waiting to be transported for one who is trusting god for increase in finances trusting god for healing trusting god for breakthrough and favor these things all things were made by him we're dealing with the law of faith now we cannot talk about faith until we understand the operation of the word of god all things not some things all things were made by him so my tomorrow is already in the word it's not going to come by the chronos the passage of time i rest in the fact that my tomorrow is already made this is the day that the lord has made not will make has made is new to me but not new to him this is the day the lord has made so it says all things were made by him then it says without him remember our initial scripture that means outside of him was not anything made that was made listen believers that means if you ever see anything manifest that is good it came as a derivative of not just scripture the letter logos that was printed by zondervan or white taker house no this is not what we're talking about we mean the speakings of God that came from the lips of the Logos of God himself. All things. All things. All things. If I were you, I would begin to write a list of whatever represents all things. So that I, I need to convince myself all things, my lifting. All things, my exploits in ministry. All things, my safety, even in the midst of the pandemic. All things. All things made by him all things made not brought by him not delivered by him if all things were only delivered by him then he is not god whoever makes is god he says i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help then he says my help cometh from the lord the maker god is not only a healer god is not only a restorer he is a maker and when you you want to understand the concept of making you have to go to the kitchen when you tell someone make me bread or make me venison that means combine factors create something that was not there manifest in that way let us make man if god made man can he not make any other thing the zenith of his creation the heavens and the earth were made man was made the bread that he eats was made the, the devil that oppresses man was also made there was nothing that was not made when you understand the making power of the word doubt leaves you because for many of us the challenge most times is we know that the word of god can deliver results but we do not we we hope that the word of god can only transport results from where it has only already been made i'll give you an instance if you are looking for a job it's easy to believe that I can get a job because you heard there is a vacancy, physical vacancy somewhere. So your trust is not that God should create space. Your trust is that God should connect you. But God is saying, I'm not just a connector to possibilities. I can make a way where there is no way. That means it is not your business whether the reality exists in the earth realm or not. If it does not exist, I am everything. I can make a door. I can provide whatever it is my help cometh from the lord please let's go back to john 1 and verse 3 very instructive scripture all things we're dealing with the law of faith now that faith is predicated upon a revelation if faith is not just action faith is not just speaking you see the mistake we make in the body of christ is that we always like to act alone we always like to speak alone the foundation of faith is a revelation conviction that stems upon the fact that god is almighty 
and that God can be trusted. That's why I took that scripture in Numbers. God cleared the air over his integrity once and for all so that we are not in doubt. Because you see, many times Satan will lie to us. He will use our situations to paint God wrong. And the moment you are in doubt of God's fatherhood and faithfulness, you cannot trust him. You see, if I, if I tell you to come and collect, say, a thousand dollars or a thousand naira from me, you will have to trust whether I have the integrity enough to do that for you. If you are in doubt of that integrity, you will also be in doubt of your fortitude for reception. So this is very important. All things were made by him. So if God tells me, Joshua Selman, you are blessed, you will be the head and not the tail. I don't need to find out where the head is. I don't need to find out how I will get there. My first assignment is to believe that the speaker of this truth has the power to make all things. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So everything is made. Results are made. Breakthroughs are made. Liftings are made. Possibilities are made. Hallelujah. So this is very important. If you are writing, I want you to write this down. Number one is, you will have to take risks of faith to succeed in life. It is a law. We live in a world where we are very risk averse. We do not want to fail. We hate failure. We hate being purported as failures. And so we are, we are very, we are, we are excessively careful to a fault. It is the reason why we cannot do many things. There are people today who cannot start businesses because they are afraid of failure. They were in a world of guarantees. We are obsessed with guarantees. The bank will not give you loan, for instance, until they have a system of guarantee. Most people will want, give me a guarantee that I will arrive safely from my trip. Give me a guarantee that the journey I'm about to start is not a risky one. The, 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 the risk that you will have to take in life is the risk of faith. The fearful, I wrote down here, and the cowardly never become great. Those who are fearful in life, those who are cowardly never become great. In fact, when you read Joshua chapter 1, it was uh, on the first seven verses of Joshua chapter 1 was the Lord exhorting Joshua. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Then he began to admonish Joshua. Joshua, I know that you have never treaded this path before. You have never led a stiff-necked and a stubborn people like this. I know that there are many things that you anticipate that will happen to you. But then he told him, be strong and of good courage. The fearful the cowardly never become great. It will take us trusting God. Even at times like this, there are people who have lost jobs as a result of the pandemic. There are people who have lost opportunities. Businesses have foiled up. Several things have gone wrong in the lives of people. And right now people are perplexed. They are, they are full of fear. They are wondering uh, what next. There are already prophecies that you know, insinuate disasters of some sort coming in the future. And people are afraid. But it says, only be thou strong and very courageous. So the law of faith mandates that will be prepared to take risks. To take risks in life. John 11 and verse 40. Shalapo sebrandagabasuzieta. Jesus said to her, Sayeth I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, believe, agree with me, take me serious, take me as true, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. The glory of God is the full weight of everything that makes him God. The entire span of the essence of who he is. His goodness, his love, his power. That if you want to see the favor, the goodness, the power, the, the glory of God, you will have to believe. You have to take God seriously. You have to pledge your life and say, Lord, I believe you. I understand what you have said. So let me walk you through the equation of faith, New Heritage Baptist Church, just to open us up to uh, the character of faith and the way that faith works. And there is no other person who will guide us in understanding the subject of faith 
like the patriarch Abraham himself. It is very, very important. I think it was Isaiah 51. Let, let me turn there myself. Uh, um, Isaiah 51. We'll read from verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 51. We are discussing the law of faith now. The law of faith. Hearken to me, all ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye were hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye were digged. Verse 2. Look unto Abraham your father. Now, let me explain this scripture. Look unto means observe. Go back like a student studying the notes of a lecturer. The Bible says the things that are written at four times, it says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. So the Bible says, understudy Abraham your father. The word father there is the originator of this system. I'm about to deal with faith and I have used a man to personify this system. Understudy Abraham your father, he says, and unto Sarah that bear you, he says, For I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. That means follow his path. Buttressing on this, Paul in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 tells us to follow them, he says, that them here are Abraham your father, Sarah your mother, and all who have followed them. He says, Okay, he said, so after he had patiently endured, Abraham now, he obtained the promise. Obtained the promise. He obtained it. So we are going to just look very quickly um, how God started with Abraham. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12 very quickly. I trust that the Lord is blessing you with this moment of profound exposition. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abraham. Now notice, this was an idol worshipper who came from all of the Chaldeans. And now, um, theologically speaking, you would, when you read from verse 11, you will find out that the first person God spoke to was not Abraham. The first person God spoke to was Terah, his father. God called the father, and for some reason... Uh, things did not work out for him. He did not seem to comply. And now we get to 12 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Now this here, I don't know about you, but this for me is the spelling of risk. Get out. Verse 1 again please. Get out of your country, number one. And then when you are in your country, don't keep in touch with your kindred. And then number three, leave your father's house. I don't know the name of whoever obeys this kind of instruction. But when you leave your relatives, when you leave your family, both spiritual and physical, when you leave your country, you are almost a fugitive and a vagabond. And now he says, leave to a land, no name that I will show you. Lord, how do I know when I arrive there? What is the name of that land? At least give me a clue. And if you obey me, verse 2, this is what follows. I will. When he was saying this, it was not yet a reality in Abraham's life. I will make of thee a great nation. Hallelujah. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. I wish I had time for us to walk this. That you are not great until your name is also great. It says, O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. It says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families, all the families of the earth, be blessed. Be blessed. Genesis chapter 15. Goodness. Genesis chapter 15. We're exploring the patriarch Abraham as a way and a guide to understand the law of faith. We're going to read the first six verses. Genesis 15. After these things, he said, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. Remember, 
Faith always starts with the word of the Lord. Faith does not just start with our pain alone. Faith does not just start with the awareness of our limitations. Faith, the process of faith starts when the word of the Lord comes. It says the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2, it says, And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing that I go childless? So this is a man trusting God for uh, a child, trusting God for an opportunity that produces continuity. And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast not given no seed. Ah. To me thou hast given no capital. To me thou hast given no destiny helper. To me thou hast not provided what becomes an advantage, a basis for security of my tomorrow. He says, And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. That means no one within. I cannot boast of saying I have someone who can represent my tomorrow. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, This shall not be thy heir. This is a prophetic word already for someone. Someone is already beginning to create alternatives. To say, Lord, it looks like you will not do what you have said. So maybe let me begin to consider lesser alternatives. And God is saying, no. What I said to you five years ago, I'm still saying it now. I have not changed my mind. I said I will bless you. I have not changed my mind. I said I will lift you. I have not changed my mind. He says, this shall not be your heir. Look how, look how nice Abraham was. Understand what is happening. He is saying, God, since for some reason you have not found me worthy, use somebody in my house at least to have a child. Lord, since... It looks like I can never become blessed by myself. Bless somebody and make the person at least consider me. And God said, no, that which I told you, that you will be the voice in your family. That which I told you, that you will be a man of God. You will not just listen to the messages of other men of God. Tomorrow, someone will also be listening to the counsel of God upon your lips. It says, this shall not be thine heir, but that shall come forth from thy own bowels shall be thy heir. Very powerful. I think, please go back to verse 4. Right where you are in one minute, if you can just say a word of prayer and say, Lord, I believe you. I'm sorry for attempting to want to create alternatives. You told me I will prosper in Lagos. I came to Lagos. You told me I should come to New Heritage Baptist Church. But as it is now, we're in 2020. Uh, and it looks like well, this is August, the eighth month. And it looks like nothing is already showing forth in my life. And I'm already giving you options to say, Lord, it looks like you will not bless me. Someone needs to pray and tell God in this conference my faith is fired up Lord I return back to that which you told me I believe you I believe you I believe you the person who will bless me you have told me that my children will feed me you have told me you will not leave me in shame but as it is none of my children have jobs and it looks like shame and reproach is all that I'm seeing and I'm about to even pray I was about to pray that you will use my neighbor or you will use my relatives to at least bless me but now you are speaking to me that by the law of faith I must return back to believe you that you are able that you are able that it will come from me I don't have to outsource it from somewhere else. Very, very powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now unto heaven, Abraham now, and tell the stars, count the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Verse 6, the character of faith. And he, Abraham, who the Bible has mandated that we understudy, the Bible says, Abraham believed God. To believe means to perceive as true. To believe means to agree that you are truthful. To agree, to attest to your integrity and to your ability. That's what it means to believe. I am convicted, number one, about your integrity. And number two, I am convicted about your ability. 
When you say you believe a thing or you believe God, you are attesting to two attributes. Number one, integrity. Number two, ability. Please understand this. We are dissecting faith. There can never be the manifestation of faith when there is no conviction about integrity and ability. Integrity is the quality of faithfulness, the quality of truthfulness. That God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man. So if God says, I will bless you. I will make your name great. When you consider what he has said as true, that means you have faith. You believe his integrity. But when you know that the word makes all things, you now believe in his ability. Others believe in his ability. God can do it. But they do not believe in his integrity. Will God do it? So faith, listen please, listen, listen. Please listen to me, people of God. When you want to manifest faith, you must trust God through scripture to have an encounter that produces conviction over God's integrity. Comes from the word integer, sameness, unbendableness, faithfulness, trustworthiness, God's integrity, and number two, God's ability. God's ability. Integrity. He said it. He can do it. He will do it. Ability. It is within his power to ward off all the forces that can negate that word from manifesting. This is very powerful. Pray again where you are seated or watching or following and say, Lord, grant me grace. I know that something is wrong with my trusting your ability. I have lived in a world where people have failed me. People have said one thing today and then turned to do the other tomorrow. And because of that, I, I am already beginning to doubt the potency of, of God. You have spoken great things concerning your Zion. And now it's like my faith is failing. But Lord, bring me back to that position, even in this conference and through this word, where I understand that your name is not only the mighty God, you are not only El Shaddai, you are also faithful and true. 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 King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Lamb of God, I worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. John spoke about the rider upon the horse, and he said his name is Faithful and True. Faithful and True. But I know whom I have believed, he said, and I am persuaded, persuaded. Regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, I am persuaded. Hmm. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God. He was convicted about God's integrity and convicted about God's ability. Convicted about God's integrity. Convicted about God's ability. Now, watch this. The way faith works is that God was fair enough to leave a compendium of his deeds with men. It would be wrong for God to just arbitrarily ask us to trust him. No. You don't ask people to trust you arbitrarily. No. 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 You can... You can you can dare people to take the risk. But then if you want people to trust you, you must be able to give people um, a, a little compendium of what you have done before. 
who trusted you that you did not fail? So, Genesis to Revelation, the logos of God, is a compendium of the dealings of God with people. Listen, this Bible is full of several people. Let's go to Hebrews 11. We are, we are about to cross-examine whether this God is worthy of our trust. Whether this God has the ability. Now faith is, Paul says, the substance of things hoped for the evidence the tangibility of the things not seen is that for by it the elders whoever they were great men patriots men who lived before us many of them who understood abraham many of them who walked with god even before abraham the bible says they all obtained a good report verse 3 it says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed starting point that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Here it is again. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Verse 4. By faith, the Bible says, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead, yet speaketh. 5. By faith, the Bible says, My God, Enoch was translated. By faith, the business was translated. By faith, the ministry was translated. So that what should have happened does not happen. By faith. It says, and he was not found because God had translated him. If God can translate a man, he can translate a family. He can translate a business. He can translate a condition. He said, for before his, trans his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Six. It says, but without faith, it is impossible. Now, we're talking of possibilities now. The first time in Hebrews, the Bible is talking of impossibility. That it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God, here is the rule. That when you come to God, you must come believing, number one, that He is. The word He is, then is He exists. He is real. Then number two, that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him mm. he is the rewarder of the men and women of God that seek him he is the rewarder of those who need his hand that seek him the law of faith now every result in the kingdom please understand this every result in the kingdom is governed by conditions if you're writing, write conditions and underline it. I'll tell you why many believers do not see the outstretched arm of God even though they keep speaking and confessing. But the Bible is like a treasure or a gold mine. A treasure place. The Spirit of God leads you to relevant scriptures, stories, parables. Now, what is generally speaking, this Bible contains three things. Understand this. I want to break it down now. This Bible contains three things. Number one, it contains promises. The Bible contains promises. The things that God vowed that He would do. Number two, the Bible contains prophecies. Number three, the Bible contains principles. So every time I study the Bible, I am looking for three things. One, I am looking for principles. Two, I am looking for promises. Three, I am looking for prophecies. So, when we read the Bible, we are not just reading the Bible like a novel that we are reading just for education and enlightenment alone. I am searching. What has God said concerning me? Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Joshua Selman, said the Lord. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, New Heritage Baptist Church, said the Lord. He says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So I know that God is thinking about me. That's the first information. It is a blessing to know that God is thinking about me. 
Then number two, it is good to know that whatever he's thinking are thoughts of peace. You see, there are people who think about you, but they may not be thoughts of peace. And he says, a terrorist, for instance, can be thinking about a nation, and the thoughts are not thoughts of peace. He's thinking, but to destroy. An armed robber can be thinking about a family, but the thoughts are not thoughts of peace. So the Bible is saying that God is thinking, and his thoughts are thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So, I begin to search by the Spirit. Open down my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see, so I, I need to find out the principle allocated for kingdom wealth and the favor of God. I need to find out the principle allocated for excelling in ministry. I need to find out the principle that are allocated for raising children properly. I need to find out the principle for restoration of anything lost. I need to find out the principle allocated for dominion upon the earth. My assignment, listen very carefully, my assignment is to know that every dimension of possibility in the kingdom is governed by a discovery of the principles connected to it. Wishing and hoping is another way to endorse delay eternally. Just wishing. One day, God will bless me. One day, I will be wealthy. One day, I will be a great man of God doing so much for the kingdom. It's wonderful to be hopeful because hope maketh not a shame. But hope remaining as hope will only lead to frustration. It must be backed up by actions of faith. Praise the Lord. This is very powerful. So I, the, the way we manifest faith in the kingdom is number one, we become students of scripture and students whose ears are inclined to the words of the Lord. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart from out of thy mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are like to those who find them. A finder is also a searcher. You have to search the scripture. Many believers are lazy and I'm trusting that by this teaching God will conquer from us that inertia, that spiritual laziness, that laxity to stand up and search. Lord, what have you said about my children? Lord, what have you said about my life? What have you said about my job? Listen, when God has not spoken about your situation, there is no hope. Hope only comes when God speaks. Most times, we spend time discussing our problems with people who cannot help us. It may be a boss in office, it may be friends and relatives as well meaning as they are, it may be maybe family members, it, it may be all kinds of well wishers. But I am proposing to you New Heritage Baptist Church and the body of Christ and, and all the believers that, that are following and will follow. Listen. The moment you find out you are trusting God for dimensions of results in whatever area, your first assignment is to go to God through His Word. And the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by His Word. God appears to people not just by visionary encounters alone. He appears to people by His Word. The Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord, by his word. You will hear in scripture that on the fifth day of the sixth month of this, the word of the Lord came. So, I find out God's word concerning my health and wholeness. I find out God's word concerning my protection. And let me challenge you, it is very, very important. Go online, for instance. Gather scriptures that talk about healing. Gather scriptures that talk about prosperity. Gather scriptures that talk about your well-being. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will follow you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
I will follow you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will follow you, Lord. I will rest in you, Lord. God is speaking to someone. I will rest in you, Lord. Stop all the running around. It's time to rest. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will rest in you, Lord. I will call upon you, Lord. He says, who is worthy of praise? I will call upon you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will call upon you, Lord. I will rest in you, Lord. I will trust you, my God. So I find it that this is God speaking concerning my life. Joshua Selma, you will be great. I will make your name great. And I look at it. And nothing around my life may be showing that result. But then I understand that God is a maker. He's not only a maker of heaven and earth. He's a maker of ministries. He's a maker of destinies. I allow myself to meditate. Now please listen. Very important. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The recipe that the Lord gave Joshua for success. That the book of the law. The book that contains principles. The book that contains promises. The book that contains prophecies. Shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Remember it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. It says but thou shalt meditate during day and night. That means be consistent. That thou mayest observe. We are coming here shortly. So I meditate upon the word. I meditate upon the promises. Do you know what meditation does? Meditation creates convictions. When you meditate upon the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to breathe upon that scripture and brings out the life and the power of that scripture so that you are persuaded beyond, you are persuaded beyond um, bending. You know that God is going to do this. Now, the Holy Ghost also shows you the role. Please, please pay attention. The Holy Ghost also shows you the role that you have to play in actualizing that promise. Principles lead us to receive promises. Please understand. It is not just the awareness of a promise alone. There are principles. So I give you an instance. If you are trusting God to give you... Um, say direction or let's say to grant you access to favor now you study the word of god and you find out for instance that favor is important that it is favor that helps men to rise in life you go to exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians the bible says and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty so when i see emptiness in my life i know that the diagnosis is that the favor of god has not been activated in my life but the, the awareness of it does not mean I have a solution. Now, how do I get favor even in the sight of Egyptians? Because Egyptians do not like Israelites, historically speaking. Not necessarily now, but as within the context of the Bible. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And yet, 
God said, under a particular condition, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So I begin to search the scripture. What is the law that makes for favor? What is the principle that I will obey? I look at things like Psalm 102 verse 13. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon your Zion for the time so I know that favor has a lot to do with timing. The time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. You see that now? So I begin to pray. Lord, I thank you. I'm meditating on the word of God. And the spirit of God tells me, okay, let me use an entity that receives favor to teach you how favor works. He takes me to the book of Esther. And now I begin to study how a little girl from Shushan, Hadassah, came to a point of prominence never used a sword to fight anyone yet she killed the greatest the act enemy of the people of god what principles did she apply the holy ghost now for instance begins to teach me that there are ways to activate favor i'm showing you how faith works ah when you are valuable it makes people to desire you when you practice honor it makes people to desire you when you understand relationships, it helps to bring favor. You can pray your way also to favor. See, I am, he's showing me the role that I have to play. Now, many believers are not attentive to their role. They are only attentive to God's role. They know what God should do, but they do not know what they should do. Their participatory role. When you act on scripture, you are not negating the finished work of Christ. It is your participatory role in making that which is finished manifest. I repeat, when you act upon scripture, you are not negating the finished work of Christ. Your action of obedience is your participatory role to make that which was finished in Christ to be manifest in your life here and now. High pressure sense. God bless you. This is Reflector Hub TV and it's our mandate that we proclaim Jesus, the crucified, the resurrected Lord of all over the nations and on this space we bring you glad tidings that your soul be refreshed, that your soul be enlightened, that your soul be transformed and because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega everything about your life has an ending point it is the beginning and the end so be rest assured that whatsoever you're passing through as spoken and as declared as you've been prayed for by god's servant apostle joshua selman on this platform just believe it that everything god has spoken about your life will definitely come to an end everything you're passing through that seems not to give Glory to Jesus, God is putting an end to it. So be rest assured and believe that He is doing wonders in your life. God bless you, stay tuned and do ensure you get this message across to your friends, family and neighbors. Ensure they to get blessed by sharing this video. And in case you are a new viewer, would like you to hit the subscribe button. Ensure you subscribe to this channel and stay in touch with us by hitting the notification bell. God bless you. We love you so much.